A very, very warm welcome. A sound we haven't heard for a while. It's the intro to a time to go wild broadcast. Well, it's a podcast. Been a while since we did our last one. It was in the middle of the streaming series, or to the end of the streaming series. But hopefully we're back, a bit more regular. And the summer has been interesting. The 2020 season, well... (laughs) Yeah, COVID struck, but we've had streaming series, we've had the Three Rivers series, we've had a national playoff, we've also had junior action going on throughout the uh, parts of the summer this year, we've also got our Witness Wild Women back in action, changes in league structures, changes in opposition for potential new seasons, who knows what's going to happen, players coming, players going, we'll try and give you a bit of a roundup over the next however many minutes, so let's do as we do. I say the magic words. It's time to go wild. A very, very warm welcome to this Time to Go Wild podcast. And what a 2020 and 2021 we have had. Of course, the 2020 end of the 19, uh, 2019 2020 season came to a bit of a, an abrupt end. And of course, things didn't work out quite how we would have liked. Unfortunately, 2020 into 2021 was a lot more disrupted. COVID-19 has struck us all. It's taken its toll on a lot of things. Hockey managed to prevail. Both the uh, EIHA and the um, Elite League managed to sort of get hockey out there. And in both cases, it's done a lot of players a world of good. The Elite League in particular because of the uh, up-and-coming internationals that that have now happened but uh, we're required to get the players out there and training and also managed to get a lot of players who've played at not so high, as high a level regularly got them a chance to get out there on the ice from the Elite League and it was a, a great opportunity. But in the meantime, of course, the IHA teams had their different streaming series, the um, National League had theirs and of course N1 North and N1 South put their t- um, different series together. The YKK Witness Wild also were available to take part. They made the jump, applied, and took part in the North North One streaming series, which, of course, featured the Blackburn Hawks, the Sheffield Scimitars, and I have to make sure I said that right, Scimitars, and the uh, Nottingham Lions, and saw a surprise return of a number of players. And none quite as noticeable, really, as Ollie Barron. It was great to see Ollie back, great to see uh, Matt Croyle returning, Stu Brittle, particularly they hadn't, we weren't expecting to see them back in wild shirts. And it was wonderful to see the guys and see them all back on the ice. And of course, it resulted in a trophy. So uh, the streaming series, success. Then a little bit of a break and the Three Rivers competition between Sheffield Scimitars, the Nottingham Lions and the YKK Witness Wilds. Of course, the Mersey, the Don and the Trent being the Three Rivers, of course. Changing coach. Ollie wasn't available, so in came Richard Hager. One, a name that many of us, of course, associate as a bit of a, how can I put it, thorn in a very good way for his playing career. But, uh, yeah, a thorn in the side of many a team, <laughs> including Witness, as, of course, he played for the whole Jets for many years. He'd made the switch, came to the other side of the Pennines, took the reins as uh, player coach of the Witness Wild for the Three Rivers Trophy, and, unfortunately, it didn't quite go, but it was a very, very entertaining competition. Came up just short. We came second in that one out of the three um, the three competitive teams, but some surprise results. Really, really good quality games, and it was as part of the um, match night team. It was a privilege to be available to take part and uh, be involved and see the games. And we hope, of course, everybody out there enjoyed the games as they were being webcast. And again, a massive thank you to all of the organisations from both Blackburn, and Nottingham, Sheffield, and for Witness, it was the guys from who do the Drop the Puck TV show and web shows. 
a massive thank you to all of them for uh, making sure that the streaming of the games went out in really good top quality um, and was a massive advert to be honest, for the sport of um, ice hockey, particularly within the EIHA structure, and the fact that we, because of the um, the N one and N two N one and S two series, and I'll get it right. Tell them doing this uh, semi live. The N one and S one series, um, they were um, free, so you could watch as much of the hockey as you wanted, and uh, fantastic it was to see. Plus, there were some women's games being played and shown through different streaming services, which were really good to see during lockdown. Then we thought, oh, it's all over. But no, it wasn't. We had a playoff series as well for the YKK Widness Wild. And it was Widness, Sheffield, um, Milton Keynes and Slough. Two teams from the south, two teams from the north in a weekend competition. And... uh, Tense it was, very tense, and in a way, I think witness from a lot of perspectives. When we compare the way in which previous North South playoff competitions have gone, it, they tend to be more in favour of the South teams. But I think witness weren't the favourites in terms of from the North. I think Sheffield were the favourites, but YKK witness wild dug deep, played hard, and. Brought home yet another piece of silverware, so uh, congratulations to everybody who was involved in the team. And I shall try to find my page to give a shout out to a large quantity of the players who've been involved. So we've got the names like Peter Toth, Ollie Barron, Ken Armstrong, Lewis Baldwin, Lee Kemp, Mikey Gilbert, Rich Hager, Bez Hughes, Jordan Griffin, Stu Brittle, Tom Barry. Phil Pearson, MJ Clancy, or even Tom McDonald was around and about as well. Matt Croyle, Danny Hayde, Chris G, Callum Worthington Evans, Joey Coulter, Matt Tarpey, Tom Jackson, Mike Marr, Adam Barnes, Cameron Brownlee, Jay Robinson, Bobby Streetley, and as we scroll through, Kieran Beach, Harrison Walker. Did I mention Phil Pearson? If I've min- if I got Phil, I apologise. Phil Pearson, um, I may have mentioned Tom Barry, second one for Tom. Um, Boris Sheba was also around for a while. Kieran Brown, Tristan Grimshaw, uh, and Brady Doxy. Now, hopefully, I've mentioned pretty much everybody. <laughs> I hope if I've missed anyone off the list, I do apologise. I've quickly been scrolling through my list of players. They were among the squads that took part in the uh, the North Streaming Series Cup and the Three Rivers Cup. A massive thank you to them and, of course, to everybody else behind the scenes, club management, rink managers, and all the staff throughout all the different clubs who've made those series, both for the EIHA North and EIHA South um, teams, who've made that possible. So... Banners are to go up again at uh, Planet Ice Witness to uh, support and congratulate the teams on their uh, success. Of course, a number of the players who've taken part in the streaming series have gone off to other clubs. But um, we've got the summer signings to come and some interesting ones to, to date have been coming through. If you've been keeping your eye on social media, and we'll go through them a little bit later on in this podcast. In the meantime, what I will say is we have some thank yous to some departing players, those of Peter Toth, who've gone to Haringey, and Mikhail Novak, who's gone up the road to Blackburn, joined the Blackburn Hawks. So uh, we will undoubtedly be seeing Mikhail in the coming season, but uh, the best of luck to Peter for his future down in Haringey for the coming season. And uh, a little bit later, we'll do a quick roundup of the signings to date. Some junior ice hockey news now. Well, we had a bit of a stalled start back in December for the uh, junior development systems throughout the country. But uh, actions finally got back underway a few weeks ago. And we've had some in-house-ish competitions between um, the Wild Academy and other teams from the likes of Manchester, Bradford and other teams and I think Hull, Coventry are also involved 
in some of the competitions for our very own um, Wild Academy. And um, being part of the off-ice team, it's been a pleasure as always to be able to witness and see this all happening and unfolding. And one of the other big things we had recently as part of the return to play is the EIHA Jamboree. And one of those was recently held at Planet Ice Witness and the quality of the hockey played by all the juniors involved in that competition was phenomenal. The speed, the pace, the skill level across all of the squads. And it was a pleasure to watch. It was absolute testament to the quality of the the youth players throughout the country who are involved in junior hockey and just love the sport. And um, it's, you know, I'm keeping tabs with our very own academy head coach, Mikey Gilbert, on the developments. And as things progress throughout the summer and then into the new season, we will try and keep you apprised here on the Time to Go Wild podcast. As for the junior hockey setup, the um, English Ice Hockey Association Junior Management Committee have decided to make some changes for those of you who haven't kept your eyes on uh, social media and the internet. Current setup comprises of under nines, elevens, thirteens, fifteens, and eighteens, and they're going to adjust for the twenty twenty one twenty two campaign. Just shifting um, most, but not but not all of the uh, the age ranges. The under eighteens will be staying the same, but the other age groups are all shifting up by one. So it will be under tens, under twelves, fourteens, sixteens. So, uh, yeah, your 9s move to 10s, 11s is 12s. And in a way, the whole disruption amongst the um, the whole summer 2020 COVID has caused a bit of an issue with, of course, with players getting on the ice, so developments have been hindered, etc. But it's great to see the fact that steps are being taken to allow players to develop and in some ways um the gap between under 15s and under 18s can be that bit bigger of a jump for some players and to quote from the press release on the witness world website um from our very own academy head coach mikey gilbert he says i, uh, I welcome this, this decision from the iha and i feel it's a good step to take due to the past 18 months um, we have had as um, a sport and country it should be beneficial for all players development to give them an extra year at the younger ages and shorten the age and physicality gap to, at under 18s this allows for a little more time with the current teams to help progress the players and give them more time together to prepare for any step ups in age groups or teams um, and I think it's fantastic it's a positive move in my view and it seems it seems to be very well very very well welcomed when I've been speaking to people involved in the um wild junior setup. Hopefully all the players will appreciate it, but then again, a lot of players do play up um so you do have under nines playing at under elevens elevens playing at thirteens, so it's not going to hinder the playing upper level necessarily um but it will just allow force the team just to shim a little bit more but we've got to make positive moves and this is one of the big positive moves over the summer so that's the latest really of biggest news on the wild academy front and we'll be bringing you more throughout the uh, the coming season a little bit of thoughts about the makeup for the uh, nihl d north teams for the coming season of course if you've been keeping your eyes on the news releases the big changes are the movements of the Sheffield Scimitars and our very own YKK Witness Wild from uh, N2 to N1. So this has a massive change and impact on the league structure potentially moving forward. Now, the potential league so far is, from what we can see um, based on the way the recruitments are, for the North... Uh, for the North One League, it will be existing teams, Whitley Warriors, Solihull Barons, who we had heard were going into the um, South League, but maybe staying in the North League. So um, we, we await cl- full cl- official clarification. The Billingham Stars, 
Blackburn Hawks, who will be only having one team as far as we are aware at the moment, uh, the Nottingham Lions, and then we're unsure on what's happening with Solway Sharks and Sutton Sting. So there is potential, potential for a league, I think it is, of nine teams. So what does that leave for N2? So at the moment, we are working on a premise that it will be the Hull Jets, though unfortunately Hull have, having, have had issues with the rink, but steps, positive steps are moving forward, but hopefully the Hull Jets will be um, flying high. So N2 at the moment is Hull Jets, more than likely the Bradford Bulldogs, the Altrincham Aces, and the Telford Tigers NIHL team. Now, Hawks 2 from Blackburn are not, at the moment, we don't think there will be a Hawks 2. There may well be. Now, some of the press releases from Nottingham seem to indicate there might be a Lions N2 team as well this coming season. So I suppose that depends on their recruitment. Um, would Sheffield be putting a second team together to go into N2? We don't know. The sad one is, of course, from Deeside, where, of course, the um, Deeside Leisure Centre is currently a COVID vaccination and test well, been testing and now vaccination centre. So, of course, it was also a Nightingale hospital. So, of course, the Dragons are without a home. And, of course, with ice time everywhere in the area being a lot of a premium and availability being tricky, it's it's looking more and more unlikely that the Dragons will have a team. So at the moment, from what I can see online, there are only four teams I can see at the moment who are definite for the D2 League. But, again, nothing is 100% confirmed. They're still waiting on clarification through from the IHA. So anything can happen between now and the start of the season. Who knows? The league can completely completely change. So as, as, as the, uh, the, the, the line goes, anything can happen in the next half hour and usually can do. But there's a lot of teams out there. There's a lot of recruitment out there. And of course, one of the biggest changes for the National League this coming season is the um, the whole Pirates are not going to be taking part. Now, this puts a massive change and in influence on player recruitment and where a lot of players are going to go. So, who's going to pick up the players who would be playing National League level or would have been playing National League level out of Hull for the Hull Pirates? Will some of them go to Hull Jets? Will some of them go to... Uh, another National League team, like for, for example, the nearest one would be Leeds. Who knows? It's going to be watch the, watch the internet, watch the news feeds, and see what happens. So um, at the moment, we cannot say for definite, will it be two leagues for the D North? Will it be one league? But what we do know is that Widnes and both Widnes and Sheffield have applied and have been accepted and are recruiting based on a a North 1 league and league structure. So, yeah, anything can happen. This is British hockey. You well, the big know. action from last weekend was the fact that our very own Witness Wild Women were back in action for the first time since... March of uh, 2020 and it was great to see everybody back on the ice and a very different look to the team I must admit number of new faces on the squad and um, I, I should go through the roster we had Charlotte Cramp Suzanne Miller Pamela England Caitlin Kerr Emma Martin Liz Loss Charlotte Jackson uh, Natalie Buc Buckles uh, Charlotte McPhee, Jennifer Hickey, Gemma Brown, Katie Adshed, Sav Sumner, Catherine Garner, Daniel Skelander, and Laura Marcroft. And the gang went out and played their hearts out in an absolute thriller. It was a um, swing on it game. Highlights are available via the um, YKK Witness Wild Facebook page and the usual... Uh, sorry... 
yeah, via the Facebook page, actually. It is shared on there, I think, somewhere. Or um, the Time to Go Wild uh, Facebook page and, of course, through the usual YouTube outlet. And it was just great to see the team out there against the Caledonian Steel Queens. And both teams just kept going and you could see how hard they've been working over the summer and how hard they've been working through the off-season trying to keep fit and keep themselves match fit and just train and get going again. And after the game, I managed to catch up with uh, a couple of the players to get their thoughts. It's been a wee while. They've been off the ice. They're finally back with this Wild Women. And I've caught up with Kat Garner. Well, Kat, heavy duty game in the end. Yep. Um, the girls came down from Scotland and they put an absolute shift in out there. They were a little bit short on players, so they did draft a couple of... Uh, a couple of ringers in, but you know what? We we fought hard and they fought hard, so that's all we can ask for today. I mean, it was a big scoring game. Charlotte was big in goal, but, you know, first game back up, properly playing at game pace as well. Yeah, and, you know, we've got a lot of new girls. Charlotte had to hold her own out there in the net today. She didn't have anyone backing her up, so, you know, a lot of pressure on her shoulders, and, you know, she did exactly what we wanted her to do. She, she gave her heart and soul out there. Like I say, plenty of new girls out there as well. You know, we've got... Jenny Hickey who was an absolute bulldog today and forward, you know, she just grafting the whole time. You know, Natalie Buckles was playing out of position for us. We had Sav out of position for us just to kind of make up numbers. Couldn't ask for any more today. I mean, it's really great seeing everybody out there, seeing how well the team's redeveloped and grown, especially all the restrictions and getting everyone back playing and training. It must have been so frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of us have had to spend a lot of time finding our fix elsewhere. We've had a lot of girls in the gym, a lot of girls putting some grafting um, off the ice. And I think we can really start to see it, you know, as we hit that third period and legs are heavy, you know, we're still driving on through and, and kind of going like the machines that we are. I mean, this is just sort of a friendly pre-season. Looking forward to sort of getting yourselves fully going for the uh, the coming year. Yeah, absolutely. Fingers crossed, you know. We, we might be appearing uh, in two divisions. We still need to find out about that just yet. We've got a lot of players that were missing today. You know, the likes of Emma Pearson and Lean were not with us um, with other commitments. So, you know, we had a really fresh team out there that are not, not familiar with games. So, fingers crossed, you know, as the season goes along, we can really make something of it. And uh, you found you a bit of a sniper's positioning today, didn't you? I don't know where that came from, honestly. I'd like to say that I've been putting the work in with the shots through the uh, the time that I've been at home. But, you know, I, you know, I really, really appreciate having Caitlin Kerr on my line and Charlotte Cramp both just absolutely grafted today. And, you know, I think they played as, you know, their play was just as important as, you know, finishing things off for me between us. I think we got five goals. So, you know, we're working really well as a line there and couldn't be more happy. I and mean, it was uh, great seeing all the different players coming together new lines as you say it's very very tough especially all the rebuilding over the last couple of years hopefully now this is the springboard for the new season especially after the the exceptionally long break absolutely you know like i said girls out in in positions that they don't normally play and all you can ask for in that time is that they just listen to what we're doing training and, and put it into action and hands down today that was a, a great performance from all i'm really impressed well we're looking forward to seeing how things progress in the coming weeks months and uh, throughout the coming season thanks for joining me Thanks a lot. See you later. A bonus surprise. I've caught up with our little Sav Sumner. Hello, Sav. Hi, oh, yeah, you all right? Hi. <laughs> oh, at least you're smiling, you're giggling. Yeah, yeah. It was weird seeing you out of position today. Oh, yeah, it was, it was weird playing D, but um, it was just one of them because obviously it's a development game for the girls. So I was just playing where coaches asked. I've um, been training the last couple of weeks in D. Um, Although I don't think it's a position I'm going to continue. <laughs> I do like playing forward, but it was nice to be fair. It was a good little run out, wasn't it? Yeah. Perhaps a development to power forward, so you sort of start from the back and come steaming through. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the thing. So I was a bit hesitant at first, and when I spoke to uh, the coaches on the bench, they just said, look, if you've got that puck and you've got a lane, just, just crash. Um, and it was nice, to be honest, sitting back and kind of having an eye open air, what the forwards do. So little bits and bobs that I can take into my forward game, but also, yeah, I did enjoy playing Dave, but... I don't know if I'll be there again. <laughs> well, as you say, it's one of those ways in which you can uh, sort of develop your game because you're seeing it from the back for a change instead of having to sort of turn round. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think it's good when, when you've got the opportunity in hockey if you can 
change and switch position and see it from all different angles you, you just get a, a wider knowledge of the game um, and that's kind of what I've seen with this opportunity and I, obviously I just want to help the girls out so I'll, I'll play where they need me to play kind of thing I mean the speed of the game of course his first game back after must be well over 18 months and uh, <laughs> or chatting with Kat you know, everyone's legs were turning to lead in that third period yeah 100% I think as well the, the weather doesn't help because it's absolutely roasting um, and for some reason it's an ice rink but it's getting hotter but no 100% being the first ga- game back at Witness it, it was hard that third period but the girls stayed focused they tried to push through it was an unlucky result um, but there's no complaints I think they all played uh, good to be honest play class I mean, it was it was really really nice. So many new players, so many different people trying to find their feet. Not just new players, but new line makeups, new style of play, diff- completely different team than you've normally played against as well. And some really nice sporting moments, particularly when one of the goals went in as well. A big hug down between the opposition players, just a case of goal out of nothing really. Yeah, 100%. I think it, it's good that we, we've got these games uh, going into the season so we can mix and match and start shifting stuff about. Obviously, if you, as you've said, it, the system we play today, lines, uh, even people. I mean, I was in D, it's all completely different and it's good that we can have this opportunity to start mixing it up and we know what's available for the season. Um, so, yeah, the girls should be so proud. Um, we've never played like this, never played in this system. We've been training in it for a couple of weeks, but to get that result, result today, yeah, it might be a loss, but it, it, it's good for the girls. They played well. I mean, just just looking at everybody out there, the team spirit, both teams, everyone was like really, really up for it and just wanted to get out there and play. Yeah, that that's the biggest thing. So when we were going on with the girls, no matter the score, we were just telling them to enjoy it. Obviously, we've had 18 months off. Just, just everyone's glad to be back on the ice. It doesn't matter about the score. It's just to get a game. And it, it was amazing to be out with them again. It, it was It was nice. I mean, anything in particular you're sort of looking forward to? I know there's probably a lot of unknowns yet before the main season starts, but anything in particular you're going to be looking forward to? I just think um, we've got an, a lot of new players and I'm looking forward to getting them gelled into the team and obviously that helping out and making sure that the Wild have got a strong squad going into next season. So playing, helping out today, playing D, so they, they could play their systems and not have to move any one way they didn't want them. Um, that's the thing I'm looking forward to. Just all the new girls, new systems, switching it up, and hopefully we can do well in the Premier League. Well, we'll be looking forward to keeping tabs on you throughout the coming season. So uh, I shall let you go and unwind, warm up or cool down, whichever one you want to call it on a day like today, because it is roasting. And we'll catch you soon. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Well, it was fantastic to hear from both players. And as you can as you can gather, the main thing is... They are just excited and loving of the fact that they can get back out on the ice. I mean, it's friendly action. It was played in a really good way. It was a lot of really good sporting moments. I mean, the the goals, a couple of them, there were bank shots and sort of a bit of a surprise and a hug between opposition players and it's like a case of a sort of a consolation arms oh, you know, wasn't expecting that to go in, or if there was a collision, it was usually a case of whoops. Brilliant, brilliant to be a part of. So we will be keeping you apprised of all the white witness wild women team developments and fixtures throughout the coming weeks and months here on Time to Go Wild Radio. And so the big news signings. The uh, witness wild have been making lots of signings, as have other teams, and we will go through them in order from first through to the most recent. And we've been waiting this evening while I've been recording this podcast for a third announcement to come through. So, of course, the coaching has changed. It's now returning coach, we can say, Richard Hager, former Hull Jet, makes the switch. And, you know, it's... And I can understand how heartbreaking it is for the Hull Jets to lose a player of such a high calibre as uh, as Richard. But we welcome him with open arms at Widnes and uh, we've already seen that he can deliver with the squad. So hopefully this new Widnes Wild team, under his guidance and the backroom staff, will be uh, moving things forward. So looking down the roster, number 16... First player to be announced afterwards 
was our very own number 16, Mikey Gilbert. <laughs> Bit of a, not really much of a surprise there having Mikey back. I mean, he is head coach of the junior system. He made the switch from Altrincham a few years back. And, of course, he's a cheeky one. He, he, he goes out, he always has fun, plays hard. We know what to expect from Mikey. He just goes out and delivers. We've seen him play basically broken in the playoffs. And he still was going out there and giving 110%. So, of course, a big warm welcome back to our own Mike. To, I will say our own Mikey Gilbert. <laughs> a bit of a chuckle there. But, um, big surprise next was the announcing of former Sheffield forward Nathan Parks Britton. Nathan will be wearing the number 10 shirt. And every time we have played against Sheffield and come up against Nathan, he has been a phenomenal player. Always delivers, gets in the right places, knows when to score, knows how to play. He's a quality player through and through and was always one to keep an eye out and keep a watch for. And it's going to be interesting to see what he brings to the squad he comes from um, a very much a never say die, keep going uh, background. He's played for the Senators and the Spartans, of course. We're really looking forward to welcoming welcoming Nathan to the Wild for the coming season. Next up, uh, certain number nine, Ken Armstrong. What would the world, Wild be like without Ken Armstrong? Well, he, he, he's he's part and parcel of the team and has been since the very beginning. Ken comes, he delivers, he does what's asked of him. He's played for the Lancashire Raptors and the Blackburn Eagles and then joined the Wild back in the beginning. And he's just there. He's Mr. Mellow a lot of the times. I've, I've yet to see Ken really get angry during a game. But he's one of those people who scored one of the very first goals for the Wild. And no matter what is asked of him, he goes out delivers every time big fan favorite and of course we welcome him welcoming him back lovely to see ken back on the ice for the coming season next returnee number 44 danny Hade came to the wild as a bit of a, an unknown the other year but has delivered big time and what else can i say he's put in some fantastic performances Never, ever gives up. Always gives 110% every game. He just delivers. And he he's always a pleasure to chat to. Always very, very, you know, up for it. Driven. Looking forward to seeing Danny back as part of the squad. And what would it be like without our number 20? Berin or Bez Hughes? Ah, uh, besides... We'd miss his mum and dad as well. <laughs> He's been with teams throughout uh, the leagues, uh, juniors at D-side, Altrincham, been part of a lot of number squads, but even went over to America for a little while. But Bears has been with us for a number of years now. And we just, again, he always delivers, be it as a forward, be it as a D-man. He just goes out and plays 110% every game. So a big favourite as well with a lot of the fans. He's a great guy to chat to. Always 100%. Cheeky chap as well. Always has a bit of fun, but plays hard. So Bez is back. Now, another one making the switch from the east to the west. Wearing the number 90 shirt again will be Jay Robinson. Jay, big guy, former Hull Jet. He's played at different levels. He's He knows what he's expected to do. Um, Jay skates hard, plays hard, digs in when he needs to. And I must admit, he uh, hadn't played for quite some time. I was chatting to him during the Three Rivers competition. And he's like... After the first game, he's like, I knew it was going to be tough. I just didn't realise just how tough. And it's even tougher than that because nobody expected the speed of that competition, for, particularly the Three Rivers, to be as fast and as intense as it was. And it caught a lot of people out. And Jay was like, I know what I've got to do. And he's coming back with a point to prove. And we're looking forward to seeing Jay 
And of course, another big loss for the whole Jets, but hopefully a big gain for the uh, the YKK Witness Wild. So that's our number 90 for the coming season, Jay Robinson. Next up, a player who'll be wearing an unusual number, 94 for him. Cheeky Chappy uh, played for the YKK Wild back in our second season. He's been at Bradford and Deeside and Manchester and played for the university team Manchester Metros. He's been in Altrincham Ace for a number of years. He was up at Blackburn and he's got a shot that sounds like a bullet leaving a gun. He's also been a bane of many a team. He digs in. He gets very gritty. It's Joe Greaves. That's a surprise for many of us seeing Joe back in a wild shirt. But, well, when Joe's playing hockey, he knows what he's doing. He's He drives. He is so driven. He skates hard. He plays hard. As I said, that shot is like a bullet from a gun. You don't want to get that caught in the wrong part of any part of your body, be it pad, never mind unpadded, be it padded. You know, I remember watching him in the first season that he played at Wild, and we heard this shot go, and it was like, wow. And those of us who've been watching him play against the Wild in the last few seasons, we know what Joe's capable of, but again, he might bang up the penalty minutes in some seasons. But when he's got his physical presence and his eye on that goal, by heck, he can bang goals in. He has picked up, I mean, there was one season it says he picked up, um, oh, he picked up 133, let's see, despite only being 28, and the who's amount of experience, he's played over 240 league and cup games at NIHN level. In that time, he scored 133 goals, 92 assists, and 400, sorry, 900, 945 penalty minutes. <laughs> he was the most penalised player in the 2016-17 and 17-18 season <laughs> oh, while playing at Altrincham. Well, hopefully, Joe, you're going to stay out of the sin bin a bit more for the wild this coming season, but... It's um, definitely uh, be expecting that bullet to come out of a gun. So that's Joe Greaves. Next up, two players who are making the switch from other clubs. First off, he played for, I think it's Altrincham. Yes, Altrincham recently. Vlad's, um, Vlad, I think it's uh, Vladislav's or Vlad's Volkanov's. He will be wearing the number 13 shirt. And having watched Vlad's when he was playing for the Aces the other year, he was a phenomenal player. Very fast, very skillful, able to cut around players. And he is going to be definitely a player worth watching for the coming season. And also moving from the Altrincham camp to the Widness Wild, wearing the number 14 shirt will be Joe Wyatt. So, a bit, bit more of an unknown is Joe, but... I suspect he's um, going to put in quite a good number of shifts. He's going to be um, doing his, doing what is necessary. It's For me, he's a, a bit of an unknown. I think he's, from what I recall of seeing him play, he's just going to go out there, do exactly what's asked of him, and what more can you say when the player goes out there and delivers? So they were two players announced on the same day. So Vlad's Volkanovs number 13, and Joe Wyatt, number 14. Next up, a player who's had a little bit of a timeout, didn't play during the uh, recent competitions, former Altrincham ace, but he's making the return, is our very own, as we can say now, Jakob Hajek, wearing the number 12 shirt again. Uh, started off with the 72 shirt, but uh, back in his 12 for the second season this time. And Hadji, well, we know what to expect from Hadji. He likes to score goals. What more does this guy love to do than score goals? He's fast, he's agile, he goes out there, and we know what to expect. We've seen him get, you know, we can see the frustration when he's not scoring, but when he gets his eye in and those goals start going in, you can just see 
how quick and agile and how much of a positive and benefit he's going to be to the team. So, welcome back for a new full season, number 12, Jakob Hajek. And that brings us right up to date with today's signings. And I'll actually go to our second one, as I have to say it in my style whenever I see him. It's my... um, Blazing Saddles moment of Hello Sheriff Lee Kemp The Sheriff is back for a new season The our big number 15 What can we say about Lee? He has that wild I think he's almost got it Tattooed in a way on his heart I mean, He travels to play for the squad He goes out there He gives 120, 30, 40% Every game He he digs deep. He just plays from the heart. We know we, 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 we know what we get from Lee. He's no mess, no fuss. Solid, protects, leads from the back. It's great to see Lee back. We're looking forward to seeing him back with the Wild for another season. And hopefully catch up with him as we do from time to time for the odd uh, interview. Big fan favourite. So, yes, the Sheriff is back. Now, I'm going to come to the big to the third announcement before I come to the second announcement. Third announcement: making the move from Blackburn to the YKK Witness Wild will be wearing the number 71 jersey, and that is Jack Murray. Jack played for the Blackburn Hawks, and uh, he has played in Morley, so he has played the at the D1 team. He's also in the D1 league. He's also played D2 level. And he brings experience and new vision from other teams, which is good as people move around. Teams don't stagnate. They get ideas, new new, new uh, visions. So, um, yes, we get a signing coming down the road from Blackburn, number 71. Bit of an unknown for me, in a way, to know what we're expecting in terms of actual play, because I haven't seen him that much. But... What we do know of players who play for Blackburn, of any team, be it the Hawks or Hawks 1, Hawks 2 or the Eagles, they always play hard, give everything they've got, no matter what, every shift. So, uh, looking forward to seeing Jack play. Now, big surprise for me, seeing as many of you know, I, I started with my hockey over in Hull many years ago. Young name that I remembered hearing about through the junior ranks at Hull. He made his break into the Hull Pirates. So he's making the move from Hull to Widnes. Former Hull Pirate Tom Stubbley is joining the Widnes Wild. And this was a big surprise because he'll be wearing the number 56 shirt this coming year. Just to give that away. No, uh, he's played at higher levels. He's wanting to make the change and come to play for Widnes at uh, at the Moral E Division. We are really looking forward to seeing Tom play. We know everybody at um, at Hull will be like, "Oh, that's an interesting signing." It's a major surprise. It's seeing a player move from uh, the National League level to um, to Moral E. I'm looking forward to seeing Tom as part of the squad. And, of course, he brings, an, a, and again, another breadth and depth of knowledge from his training from with from other coaches to um, a developing and growing and expanding Witness Wild team. And we are looking forward to the way things are progressing over the coming weeks till we get to the start of the season. So up to now, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's 14 players we've covered. And uh, that's they're the latest ones. So Tom Stubbley, our very own Sheriff Lee Kemp, and Jack Murray announced throughout the social media today. That is the Monday the 26th of July, 2021. And of course, keep your eye on social media outlets for the signings as they progress throughout the coming weeks as we uh, approach the start of the new season so there you have it pretty much for this podcast big changes throughout the league big changes for the uh, YKK Witness Wild squad 
other squads are picking up players left, right and centre. Keep your eye out on social media for everything that's going on. Of course, you can keep your eye on all the social media outlets. The club's own webpage, witnesswild.co.uk, facebook.com or twitter.com slash witnesswild. There's also the uh, Witness Wild's very own YouTube page. Just do a quick search for Witness Wild. And, of course, all the other major outlets. As for what's happening with the Time to Go Wild radio show moving forward, um, the main thing is we are hoping to be back with a bit more of a weekly roundup as we get into the main season. We're hoping to sort of change the format a little bit. Um, at the moment, the COVID restrictions are still around us all. We're all st- still being very, very careful. And as such, we won't be coming directly live from Holton Community Radio. So I want to take this point to say a massive thank you to Holton Community Radio for allowing us to launch the Time to Go Wild radio show from their studios and the continued support that they've given us throughout the years where we've done the show live from the studios of HCR 92.3. Will we be back at Holton Community Radio in the near future? We were going to be playing it by ear, especially with the COVID restrictions and um, personal commitments, just on account of um, logistics. It's basically logistics at the moment, um, occupation of the studios, social distancing, etc., etc. So at the moment, we will be keeping this as a online podcast, hopefully with once a month a bit more of a round table trying to get a few people from within the fan base together, get them around the table, have a discussion and bring that to you as part of the Time to Go Wild podcasts as we move forward in the coming season. So you can still contact us, Facebook or twitter.com slash ttgwradio. We also have our email address, radio at witnesswild.co.uk. So feel free to drop any questions, queries and you know suggestions through via those outlets, and we can start building the uh, the Time to Go Wild radio podcast show for the coming season. We'll hopefully also bring you the post-match interviews, as well as supporting the video outlets for the Witness Wild and the Witness Wild women. Um, we'll also try and bring you as many of the news stories each week as we can. But from this Time to Go Wild radio podcast, I'm going to say... Thank you for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. Keep your eye out online for the releases of the future podcasts. And all I'll say for now is keep well, look after yourselves, enjoy your hockey, and we'll catch up with you very, very soon. From me, for this podcast, ta-ra.